everyone, it's Whitney. Welcome to today's video. Today, we are gonna be sealing up this concrete countertop that my dad and I poured ourselves. So if you've been searching for a concrete countertop sealer, you know, there are a million products on the market and it can be overwhelming. It took me a month to figure out which route I wanted to go. So I wanted to share with you why I chose this route. This is an all natural tongue oil. I do have some beeswax, countertop paste wax. I don't know if we're gonna need this, we will find out. But I went with a natural oil and beeswax because I wanted it to be chemical free. But if you are looking for kind of a more like plasticky sheen, then I have some options for you. We'll get to those in a little bit, but I just wanted to get my first coat of this on, let it soak in, and while this is soaking, I'll talk to you about the other products that I was like really torn between. So let's do this. Ooh, so nice and soft. It's not perfect, but I love it. So one of the reasons I wanted to use a natural tongue oil is because this is kind of like a mixed media countertop. I put a one by two as kind of like the frame for this, so I needed something that could go on top of concrete and also seal in the wood. Tongue oil, bada bang. Full disclaimer, I'm not a professional concrete artist or concrete countertop sealer. This is my first time doing this and we're learning together. It's a learning experience, okay? Okay, we are committed now. Wipe it around. Ooh, this is way thicker than I thought it would be. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wasn't thinking this. It actually looks really nice over the wood. I think this is going on well and how it's supposed to. It looks like the videos I've watched. <laughs> the good thing about tongue oil is that it is all natural. It's food grade. Um, you don't have to worry about any chemicals on your countertops. Um, and then you can reseal it. Like if you need another coat down the line, you can just do another refresh your coat. First coat is done, it's looking pretty good. Now with some tongue oils, I've seen people do like six or seven coats of this. They wait about a half an hour in between. With this specific tongue oil I have, it says put it on, wait for an hour, wipe off the excess, and then do another application in 12 hours. Definitely soaking in faster on the areas that are more porous, like the, the little divots that weren't super polished. So that leads me to why I didn't want to use um, one of the products. So let's start talking about that now. Future Whitney here, hi. If you just want to skip to the video where it's more the DIY part with me applying more tongue oil, then skip to like minute 12. These next few minutes, I have a lot of thoughts about some of the products that are on Amazon. So if you, it's really informative. If you want to hear about it, stick around. But if you just want to get to me applying more of the tongue oil and the whole like tongue oil process and the beeswax process and skip, skip ahead, like minute 12. Let's talk about the two more commercially produced concrete countertop sealers that I was really, really torn between before I decided to go with the tongue oil. Chang, this was the first one that I was really drawn to. It has amazing reviews on Amazon. There are some not great reviews, which I'm gonna to get to in just a second, but I was really drawn to this one. The finish was a little bit more of a satin finish. And I didn't, at the time, I didn't really realize uh, if I wanted a satin finish or if I wanted like a matte finish, I didn't really care. Um, but the more I started looking at the review photos, of the satin finish, I just didn't like it so much. So Chang is a penetrating sealer and a lot of the people kept saying that it would penetrate so quickly and not create a seal very well that they had to do like upwards of 10 to 12 coats to actually get a seal. So if you have to do 10 to 12 coats, you're gonna need to buy multiple bottles of this stuff. And then a lot of people said that once you do get a good seal, there, there's so many coats on it, it, there's like a plasticky film and it, that film can scratch really easily. Like, you know, moving a plate, a fingernail scratches on the countertop and it scratches and then it doesn't look great. So I didn't wanna deal with that. And then with Chang, there are very specific directions that you have to follow like meticulously. So you have to mix it with water and I think each layer you do the water uh, sealer combo needs to fluctuate, I don't know. And then a lot of people said that they followed the instructions like to the T and the results were not that great. A lot of, um, you could see streaks in it, it wasn't, it didn't penetrate evenly everywhere. If that happens, you have to remove that sealer with like acetone and scrubbing pad. 
this is my first time making a concrete countertop and it's not perfect. It's not totally polished everywhere. So some areas are more porous, some areas are polished more. So like the, the pores are closed. So it's not going to be the same penetration. I think, I don't know, since this is my first one, I didn't want to go with anything that was more like difficult to work with, I guess. For the Tough Duck, I was ready to purchase. It was in my cart, ready to go, but I was like, let me let me read through this again one more time because once I make a commitment, that's the commitment. <laughs> so, do I have problems with commitment? Do I have commitment issues? So the Tough Duck is acrylic, Chang is plastic, both supposedly non-toxic, food safe, but I don't know. Uh, but with the Tough Duck, there were so many wonderful reviews where I'm like, this has got to be great, right? But there was this one review from this guy who had plenty of experience working with concrete countertops. He said for this concrete countertop, he did. He did it just like I did. Instead of pouring it in like a melamine form and then flipping it over and that's your countertop, he poured it in place. And he said, if you screed the heck out of it, which is what my dad and I did, <laughs> we screeded the heck out of it to try to get it smooth. He said, it's not gonna work. It doesn't penetrate as a penetrating sealer should. It's more of a topical like sealer that goes around. So it is kind of plasticky, it's kind of soft and scratches hard, and then there's a lot of streaks in it, which is not what I wanted. While I was prepping for this video, I looked at the Amazon listing for the Tough Duck and they just put in their little description, the very, very, very bottom, this was not there before, very, very bottom, this product is not made for polished concrete countertops. Please use the Tough Duck stone sealer, which I don't know what that one is. I didn't look into it. I've already committed to the tongue oil. The Tough Duck stone sealer might work really well for you. I don't know. You're gonna have to take into account if you poured your concrete into a melamine form, which I'm guessing if you do that, it's gonna be more porous when you flip it over. Like the top is gonna have more pores because it wasn't polished. And I think that will be able to accept like the penetrating sealer easier. But if you poured it like I did in place and then polished it and then I sanded it with, you know, different grit sanding paper. If you do that, the pores are going to be closed, more closed. And I don't think the penetrating sealers can penetrate that very well. So it's just going to make like a, you know, like a film over the thing. Kind of like a polyurethane or like a shellac, I'm guessing. You know, it just kind of goes over and seals it. I mean, you could, you could totally polyurethane or shellac a concrete countertop, I think. How did I get to deciding on tongue oil and possibly the use of a beeswax paste wax? I just YouTubed, I Googled, what is a natural concrete stone countertop sealer? Tongue oil. And it's not made from tongues, it's made from like some sort of seed. I watched like a million videos and the finish was exactly what I wanted. It's all natural, it's food safe, and it's easy to apply. And if you need to reapply, you can just put another layer over it in the future. And tongue oil kind of hardens over time and turns into like a urethane. So perfect, right? I did see in other videos is that people were putting like six to seven coats and their oil seemed like a lot thinner. This tongue oil that I got is really thick. It was surprisingly thick because all of the videos I watched, it looked like more of like an olive oil. This is more of like, almost like honey. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not as thick as honey, but it is, it is, it's pretty thick. So I think that's why the instructions for this are put one coat, let it sit for an hour, wipe it off, wait 12 hours, put another coat, let it sit for an hour, wipe it off, and you should have a good penetrated seal. And it says it might take more than two coats. We'll find out. But the question is, do we need the beeswax paste wax? I don't know. I think what I'm gonna do is go out and find one of those concrete planters we made like a long time ago and do a little tester of the beeswax on that 
and see if that works. Cause I don't want to start putting beeswax on here and like ruin it. Here's that candle thing we made out of uh, the same cement hall. So we're gonna run some experiments on this. I already did some experimentation earlier. So on the bottom part, this half over here is polyurethane and this half over here is shellac. So you can kind of see the difference. They're both pretty sheeny. The reason I didn't want to do a polyurethane or a shellac is it's really easy to get air bubbles in your urethane. Then you have to sand them out. It was just kind of more of work than I really wanted to do for this. This is the beeswax paste wax stuff that I got. This is Daddy Vans. It is food safe, chemical free, non-toxic, zero VOCs. It's literally just unrefined beeswax, olive oil, and carnauba wax. So we are gonna get a little bit on a paper towel. You should probably use a cloth towel for this. A little bit on a paper towel. And we're just gonna rub it on the outside of this. That's actually really pretty and really easy. Well, now I don't think the beeswax alone is gonna be enough of a penetrating sealer to give you a full like watertight seal across your whole countertop, but I think I might go in with this over the tongue oil once that's fully set in to give it like the extra barrier layer. So I'm just using the leftover oil that's already on this rag from earlier. All right, so you see how fast this is already absorbing? Like, look, where the darker part is, this is new tongue oil, and this has already been absorbed. This is happening so much faster than on my screeded countertop. So this is poured concrete. We poured it into a bowl. So there are way more pores. It's way more porous when you pour it into a form than when you pour it in place and screed it and polish it. So this is basically what I saw in the videos. They would go in like every uh, 20, 30 minutes and do another coat and it would already start to dry. So that's that's two coats and it's like already drying. Holy camole! It is soaking it up. All right, so it is the next day. Let's check this baby out. So I got beeswax over here and I did three coats of the tongue oil over here. I'm just gonna do a little water test. I mean, it kind of runs off, but you can see that it is still able to penetrate into the concrete. So this is definitely not fully sealed yet, but this is the beeswax. Well, that is like running right off. I feel like just one coat of the beeswax made a better seal than the three coats of the tongue oil. Perfect, good to know. Okay, I am gonna use the beeswax. So it has been an hour and it's kind of soaked in a little bit, but we are gonna wipe off the excess and then I'm gonna go in with another coat in 12 hours. All right, I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but you see the streaks a little bit. This is what I was fearful of happening with either the Tough Duck or the Chang. It's not gonna happen here because we're wiping it off, but I feel like with the Tough Duck and the Chang, this is what people were talking about, being able to see the streaks. I'm just going with a clean rag and wiping up the excess. The excess has been wiped off. We're gonna let the rest of this penetrate. And then in 12 hours, I'm gonna do another coat. And then we'll do a water test and see if we need another coat after that. It is the next day. It's looking pretty good. So the areas that were more porous definitely need another coat, but the areas that were more polished almost look like it's kind of sealed. So I have a wet paper towel here. Let's just do a little water test and see what happens. I mean, I feel like this is kind of sealed just after one coat, but in the more porous areas, you can see that it's soaking up into the, like the lighter concrete. So far, so good. Let's do another coat. I got smart and pulled out a glove because this stuff is like rather stinky. been 
in an hour with this second coat on here and it's looking pretty good. There's only one spot that seems kind of light, like it might need another coat, but there was a lot of those lighter spots up here and those look like they're pretty well penetrated. So I'm gonna wipe this off and we'll probably do a third, a third coat. I think it needs, I think it needs one more coat. Looking good. This is what it looks like after two coats. It is fully dried. It is definitely not oily to the touch, but I think I am going to do one more coat just for, I mean, I could just go in and do the lighter colored spots, but I'm going to do one more coat over the whole thing. It is looking so good. Everything is soaked in. There is no oily finish and let's do a water test yeah it's definitely not penetrating in let me just dry it off and we'll see if there's any sort of discoloration yeah i don't i don't think so i think we're good i am going to go in with a layer of the beeswax just to give it an extra little seal so I'm using a microfiber towel and just getting some of the beeswax and going in circles. Then I'm just going to take a clean part of the rag and wipe the excess off. I'm not sure if you're going to really be able to see this very well, but this is where I've put the beeswax and this is where I haven't. So when you first put it on, it's like pretty shiny. And when you wipe off the excess, it kind of has a satin finish, but then when it dries, it looks a little bit more matte. I think this looks really, really, really pretty. I love how my countertop has turned out. Now, a few things that I've learned. Once you have applied what you think is going to be your last coat of tongue oil, give it a good 48 to 72 hours and let your surface fully soak in all of that tongue oil and then see if you need one more coat. I probably could have done one more coat on here, but I feel like with the beeswax I put on top, I do have a full waterproofed seal. And the great thing with beeswax and tongue oil is you can reapply as necessary. You can either just keep reapplying beeswax, like probably maybe monthly, every other month, depending upon how much use you get out of it, or you can wait until that layer of beeswax you put on is fully you know, rubbed away, is fully gone, and then go in with another coat of tongue oil and then beeswax on top of that. And another thing I learned is that with my particular tongue oil, I don't know if this goes for all tongue oils, but mine was really thick, you can dilute it with mineral spirits. And this apparently helps the helps the tongue oil penetrate your concrete a little bit faster. So hindsight, would I do it like that? Maybe, but I hate the smell of mineral spirits. So I kind of like the way that I went. And as for product usage, I have a ton of tongue oil left over. I mean, my bottle was just like a little tiny bottle. There's, I could probably do three, four more countertops. I mean, I have a lot of that left over. And the beeswax is gonna last me forever. I mean, um, that is gonna last me for years. If you're on a super budget, I think tongue oil and beeswax would be a really great option for you. Unlike the Chang, I think you're gonna need multiple bottles of that product to get a good seal. I am absolutely thrilled with the finish of this concrete. It feels finished, it feels sealed, it's smooth. It's kind of like velvety. That beeswax makes it like a little bit velvety feeling and it's not plasticky. It doesn't look plasticky, it doesn't look you know, sheeny, it's not satin, it's not semi-gloss. It's not totally matte because there's beeswax on there, but it's perfect, I love it. Now, with an all-natural product route, there is going to be some more long-term maintenance. You're gonna have to reapply either coats of tongue oil or coats of beeswax, but that is a sacrifice that I'm willing to make to have all-natural products in my, especially eating area. But if you aren't looking to, for the hassle of you know ongoing maintenance and if you're looking for you know a more commercial product, then look into the Tough Duck Stone Sealer. It does say that it is non-toxic and food grade. So I haven't done a ton of research into that, but look into that if you have a 
poured in place screeded countertop that you're looking for a more commercial sealer for. I'm pretty sure the Tough Duck Stone Sealer will give you a good outcome. And I don't think there's any maintenance, like long-term maintenance for that one. If you have made it to this point in the video, thank you so much. And I owe you an apology for the sound quality on this video. I just got a new, uh, it's a Rode Mic Pro. It's a really good microphone, but I don't know how to work it. And this is a very echoey room. So the sound is not that great. I do apologize to your ears. Um, but if you do like videos like this and you've stuck around all the way to the end, thank you so much. Please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. I would love to have you join me here on this channel and join my little Whitney DIY fam. All right, I will see you all on the next one. Bye.